At least 85 people now are confirmed dead after a shooting spree at a Norwegian youth camp. Uh, that attack came just a matter of hours after a powerful blast in downtown Oslo claimed at least seven lives. An extraordinary picture has emerged from Friday's horrific events. Have a look at this. It's uh, an act of desperation as a man in the water pleads for his life while the gunman carries on with his brutal executions. Meantime, a 32-year-old Norwegian man is being held in connection with both the bombing and the shooting. And there are reports he's linked to a far-right movement. A second man has, uh, was seized now by special forces in the area where victims' relatives had gathered. But it's not clear if he is an accomplice to the double atrocity. Well, uh, the Norwegian Prime Minister, meantime, has said that more democracy and openness is the answer to the violence. But Hella Luras from the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs believes it's the country's policies of multiculturalism that turn the gunman against his own people. We have an increasingly uh, intense and heated debate about immigration, uh, about what immigration is doing to Norwegian culture, that multiculturalism is uh, really not uh, the way to go forward. Uh, marginalized Norwegians uh, feel their voices are not being heard in the political establishment, that uh, the Norwegian people have never been consulted uh, democratically about whether they want immigration on, or, or not, and that the political establishment is a sort of an elite that lives in areas which are, to put it that way, all white, and that it's lower class Norwegians who feel that immigrants are sort of uh, getting into their territories, uh, removing them for the, from their jobs, lowering their salaries, etc., and that uh, they have no way of, of playing the democratic rules. I guess that so far seems to be the motivation of this person as well. Now, in the light of the attacks, Norway has reimposed the Schengen border controls. Denmark did the same over two weeks ago, a move strongly criticized by other EU members. Alexander Selevanov from the Moscow State Humanitarian University says there are signs that a united Europe is falling apart. The European project is collapsing, it's slowly collapsing. Uh, you know, there are lots of migrants coming from Tunisia, from uh, the uh, North Africa, and uh, some countries have to again to raise borders. They have to put in uh, to put back uh, the restriction, the passport control, the immigration control, and that uh, uh, only tells us that the European project lacks the you know kind of vitality, the the right agenda. And it should be uh, shared by the people living in the EU. People have to be ready to actually uh, welcome those people, or they have to say no to those coming to their countries. But uh, the governments of those countries have to put it to either referendum or actually talk to their people rather than just uh, saying we are going to ban this or ban that. Every stakeholder has to have a say in it, not just the uh, citizens of the country, not just the migrants, because you see there is a contradiction. Breivik is famous for his anti-Islamist uh, calls uh, as supposedly to the information shared by the media of uh, Norway. And at the same time, there's an Islamist organization that uh, said they, they have taken responsibility for, for the blast in, in Norway. So you see there's a contradiction. A person uh, famous for his anti-Islamist calls and at the same time, Islamist organization taking responsibility means that there is something deeply wrong with the communication.